Americans are very upset. They haven't quite been the same since December, when the Chinese company DeepSeek popped up with an AI model that easily competes with the best American models. But this was only the beginning. It's foreseeable that there'll be many more DeepSeek moments. Just the other week, Chinese researchers presented a quantum computer that rivals the best American one. A Chinese company released an autonomous AI agent, which became wildly popular overnight. The Chinese government invested another 100 or so billion dollars into new technologies. They're rapidly building up their own semiconductor industry. And at that rate, they'll be opening a wormhole to Andromeda next week. I have a quick summary. This should have been big news, but it wasn't. Just a week ago, researchers from the University of Science and Technology of China in Hefei announced remarkable progress with their quantum computer. It's called Suishongxi 3 after Suishongxi, a famous Chinese mathematician, and it works with superconducting circuits like Google's. In December, Google had reported that they were able to perform a calculation in five minutes. That would have taken a supercomputer 10 to the 25 years, though what the media reported instead was that they found evidence for a multiverse. The new Chinese system also has 105 qubits, the same as Google's Willow. The analyst firm Global Quantum Intelligence has found that the Chinese computer is basically on par with Google's in all measures, at least in this universe. The quantum computing race is definitely heating up. And then on March 5th, the Chinese startup Monica released Manos AI, which they described as the first general AI agent released to the public. It's designed to handle tasks like trip planning, stock analysis and report creation without human guidance. Also, they say in their demo, and yes, that's very similar to the GPT operator demo, which we saw in January. At the moment, Manos is only accessible with invitation codes that have been traded online for prices exceeding $1,000. Many of the first users have been impressed, though some have claimed it's built on Anthropic's Claude. Next up, we have an announcement from the Chinese government that they've created a government-backed investment fund of approximately $138 billion that includes quantum technologies and AI. Going by previous funds they've created, the government will probably contribute about 20 to 30 percent. They already have several such funds for the semiconductor industry. And speaking of semiconductors, Chinese researchers are doing a lot of work on generating the next generation of microchips. For one thing, they're pretty close to having their own machines for extreme ultraviolet lithography. That's a method of producing microchips with extremely fine details. At the moment, the Dutch firm ASML is the only producer, but it seems like that monopoly is about to end. The Chinese are also developing atomic scale manufacturing, which is basically the next level of engineering. Whatever the next generation of smaller chips looks like, it's likely to involve this atomic scale manufacturing. Most of the research we see coming out of China at the moment is applied. They're very output oriented. We also see this in terms of output in the number of scientific articles. On that count, Chinese research output has overtaken the US American one already in 2015. In 2020, China took the lead in top cited papers and according to the South China Morning Post also has the most top scientists. Yes, there are reasons to be somewhat skeptical of what the Chinese media says about China, but I think Americans finally understand that they can't just put it all down to propaganda. All of this is not so terribly surprising if you take into account that China's population is more than four times that of the United States. But if you take that into account, it's also foreseeable that they'll likely pull significantly ahead in the coming decade. I used to rarely talk about Chinese research because it was too difficult to find any good information about it. But also in this regard, the situation has completely changed in the past years. On the most basic level, the quality and frequency of English press releases from Chinese institutions has noticeably increased. And they're also more present on social media 
media websites that we Westerners frequent. The Chinese space station, for example, has a Twitter account. I find this an interesting development because it seems that as China makes advances in science and technology, it's also becoming more open. Okay, I'm not a quantum computer, but I wanted to be on record that I summarized in five minutes what would have taken Lex Friedman 10 to the 25 years. Is that evidence for a multiverse? Let me know in the comments. I have a weak spot for good design, which is why I'm happy to recommend you check out the amazing hover pens from Novium. These pens float in their base thanks to strong permanent magnets and can freely spin. You can see that they're really well balanced. You don't have to fumble to put them in and they don't drop out either. The hover pen doesn't just look good, it's also a pleasure to write with. It flows nicely across the page and it's refillable too. Novium has a variety of these hover pens but the interstellar pen is the coolest. It has a premium version with a meteorite embedded. Yes, a real meteorite, so there's part of your pen that actually flew through outer space. They also have gift sets for the hover pens, like this one, which comes with a notebook and cards for to-do lists. If you go and check them out, make sure to use my link, scan the QR code, or use the code Zabine. In the next 48 hours, that'll get you 20% off on all hover pens and free shipping to most countries. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.